Namaste. So if you've been involved with spiritual life for any amount of time, and certainly if you've watched a bunch of our videos on this channel, then you probably already have the idea, I should study Vedanta. <laughs> because Vedanta is the end of knowledge, the final conclusion of the Vedas. It is that knowledge, once known, there is nothing further to be known. The ultimate knowledge. The final knowledge. So, in this video, we're going to talk briefly about what Vedanta is, and then we're going to introduce you to the materials that you need to study, how to download them, and then how to study them. So, this is going to be just a short overview, but hopefully it'll get you started. First of all, what is Vedanta exactly? Well, it is a set of literatures. If you watched our recent video on the structure of the Vedic literatures, you know that the Vedas, the four Vedas, Rik, Sama, Yajas, and Atharva, give the texts for the Vedic rituals, Vedic sacrifices. Usually these were performed in big temples by great kings. Nowadays it's still done in temples, but also in homes, by ordinary people and also by Brahmana priests. So the texts are one thing. Then the instructions to the priests on how to perform the rituals are in a separate section called Brahmanas, because the Brahmanas are usually the ones who carry out these instructions. But there is a certain section of the Brahmanas that are called Aranyakas. Aranyaka means in the forest. And these literatures are typically very esoteric, dealing with mystical powers and other results of sadhana and also self-realization. And these are traditionally only taught to sannyasis or very advanced candidates for sannyas in an atmosphere of complete renunciation in the forest. So the reason they're taught there is that is the proper atmosphere, the proper environment for understanding these esoteric truths. So the final word on all of this is in the Upanishads. Upanishad means come close, sit down, and hear the esoteric secrets, the esoteric teaching of the Vedas. Vedanta, the conclusions of the Vedas, the real meaning of all those rituals and sacrifices, the aim of all spiritual life and self-realization. And then finally, the Upanishads are summed up in the Vedanta Sutra or Brahma Sutra, the uh, comprehensive work by Vyasadeva that summarizes and also concludes all the Vedic literatures. So, if you want to study all of this, it would probably take five lifetimes. <laughs> but to get the gist of it, all you need to do is study the ten principal Upanishads and the Brahma Sutras. So, the ten Principal Upanishads are the Isha Upanishad, Kena Upanishad, Kata Upanishad, Taitriya Upanishad, Aitareya Upanishad, 
Mund ka Upanishad, Mandukya Upanishad with the Karaka, Prashna Upanishad, and then the two magnum opuses, Brihad Aranyaka Upanishad and the Chandogya Upanishad. So I have created an upload of all these books and the recommended editions of those books with Shankaracharya's purports in English. And so you can look in the video description below, and there's a link to my Google Drive that contains all these literatures. You can download them for free to your computer and then study them. So then the question is, how do you study them? Well, the first thing you need is a dictionary. And as soon as you are feeling foggy, confused, or if your mind goes blank, you lose comprehension, you forget what you were reading five minutes ago, it means you have misunderstood words. You should go back to where you were doing okay and look for the word or words that you don't understand. Look them up in the dictionary and define them in the context in which they appear. Make up some original sentences until you feel comfortable that you know the meaning of the word, and then only read on. Otherwise, you get stuck in a tangle of confusing misunderstandings and give up. That's what happens to most people. The other book you need is a Sanskrit dictionary. And we have put a link in the description of the Sanskrit dictionary online, which is called sanskritdictionary.com. Highly recommended. But to use it, you're going to have to learn to type in IAST. IAST means International Alphabet for Sanskrit Transliteration. You see in the books that you download and also on this channel, when we encounter a Sanskrit word, it's italic and it has diacritical marks to show the proper pronunciation. Now, the problem with most diacritics or most transliteration schemes is that they're not bidirectional because they're lossy. That means information is lost going from Devanagari, which is the alphabet that Sanskrit is usually presented in, to the Western scripts, Roman scripts as they're called, Western alphabets. So you can't go from Devanagari to the Western Roman alphabet and back again because some information is lost in the transliteration. IAST is one of the only two or three, and is certainly the best method of transliterating Devanagari into Western characters that is fully reversible. You can go, and there are online tools that go from Devanagari to IAST and back again, without any loss of information or any distortion of the meaning. That's the key. Because just a single letter can totally change the meaning of a Sanskrit word. There's a funny story. <laughs> In Hindi, vernacular of uh, Sanskrit, the final A is usually left off of words. So instead of ananda, it's going to be anand. Huh? And instead of deep, it's going to be deep. See, with no final A. So when we were first studying Sanskrit in India back in 1970s, one smart aleck guy thought he uh, could apply this everywhere. So, of course, worship of the deities is called puja, with a long final A. 
And long final A is not dropped, even in Hindi. But he didn't know this. So we went to Bengal. We were in Bengal, and he was talking to some local guys and saying, oh, yeah, we do pooj to the deities, thinking that he could drop the final A. Well, guess what? In Bengali, pooj means dog poop. <laughs> So he was saying, basically, we offered dog poop to the deities in the temple. Oy. <laughs> a single letter, long or short, can make a complete difference in the meaning of the word. So the diacritics are very important. For uh, Here was another example. Not so humorous, but it shows maya means illusion. Duality, the material creation. And Maya, short A's, means made of. For example, the physical body is called the Anamaya Kosha. It means it's made of food, Ana. So the difference between Maya and Maya is a completely different meaning. Therefore, one has to become familiar with Sanskrit diacritics and pronunciation and rhythm and so on, because the long vowels are twice as long as the short ones. Maya or Maya. See, and any native speaker of any Indian language can instantly tell the difference. And the same with the different vowel sounds, like na, nya. Na, na, and na. See, five different N sounds. A native speaker can tell the difference between sha, sha, and sa. See, so one has to learn all these things and be comfortable with them to deal with Sanskrit. That's a whole other subject, and we don't have time to get into it. But... There's finally one pro tip, my secret weapon, liquid text software. Liquid text is so cool. It's the best way to read, annotate, and study any kind of PDF file. It runs on any kind of computer. You can download it from their site, which is linked in the video description. And I have another folder of liquid text projects of all the books that I recommended you to download, and that's also linked in the description below. So you should download all these things, and you should go through them, get familiar with them. Yeah, it's going to take a while. It's a very large body of literature. Uh, I would estimate about... 6,000 pages. But hey, it's going to keep you off the streets, keep you out of trouble, and give you wisdom, give you the knowledge that you need to attain self-realization and complete enlightenment for yourself. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.